Hello everyone. Today I am going to explain the next topic convergence of Taylor series. So now just see in the previous video I have explained you what do you mean by Taylor series about center A. So what is the Taylor series generated by some fun function? at x is equal to a this is given by f of x is equal to f at a plus x minus a into f dash at a plus x minus a whole square by 2 factorial into second derivative of the function at a plus x minus a to the power 3 upon 3 factorial into third derivative of the function at a and so on x minus a to the power n over n factorial into nth derivative of the function at a and so on. So this is our Taylor series which is generated by this function at any point x is equal to a. We can check the convergence of this series by applying the ratio test the same case as we have done in power series for what values of x the given series is convergent or not. So in that way we can check whether this series is convergent over some interval or not. And then now the next question is whether this series which is generated by fx is converging to the same generating function or not. Right. The next question is this series this Taylor series generated by fx whether it converges always to the same generating function or not. So the answer is no. Not always the series generated by the function fx at any point a is converging to the same generating function. This is not always true. So this is based on the Taylor's theorem. The Taylor's theorem this is an extension of generalization of mean value theorem. right now first of all see what is the mean value theorem mean value theorem says that whenever you are having a function f which is continuous on some closed interval a b right and its derivative exists in the open interval a b then there exists at least one point c from the open interval a b where the derivative of the function at c is f b minus f a upon b minus a right so this is the mean value theorem that the derivative at any point is uh, parallel to the code joining the points a b right so if you simplify this you will get this is equal to f b it is equal to f a you can take this term to this side plus b minus a into f dash c so if we choose interval rather taking interval a b if we choose the interval to be x a right then this uh, sorry a x our a is same and b is x so you can replace b with x so this is basically where c is a point which is lying between a and x right now just see with the help of uh, this taylor's series how this taylor theorem in uh, taylor theorem we will see it is a generalization of mean value theorem in case of mean value theorem we are having this thing Whenever a function is continuous and its first derivative exists in the interval a to x, then it can be written as f of a plus x minus a into f dash c where c is the point which is lying between a and x. Now see its generalization. Let's suppose you are having a function which has the derivatives of all higher orders.
right in an open interval i containing the point a then for each positive integer small n and for each x in the interval i we can express the function fx as fa plus x minus a into f dash a plus x minus a whole square upon 2 factorial into f double prime at a till up to nth order derivative right plus some remainder term right where this remainder term is the n plus 1 th derivative of the function at c into x minus a to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial where this c is lies between a and x so this is the taylor's theorem which is a generalization of mean value theorem in case of mean value theorem we are having the points up to here right uh, so here our first derivative exists at any point c where c is a number which is lying between a and x right but in case of taylor theorem since all the higher order derivative exist in the interval i which contains the point a so we can approximate this function as a polynomial of order n this is said to be polynomial of order n in taylor series if we will find out the term still up to nth derivative then this represent a polynomial and this is a polynomial of order n so this is said to be taylor's polynomial of order n order n means n nth derivative right here order n does not represent the degree of the polynomial it represent we have to find out the polynomial till up to nth derivative right so this is a polynomial of order n which is represented by this symbol okay so this theorem says that if your function has all higher order derivative existing in the open interval i which contains the point a then we can express the function as a polynomial of order n plus the error term which is the remainder term where remainder term will be the n plus 1 th derivative of the function at c just like in the mean value theorem it's the first derivative at c so here it is n plus 1 th derivative at c into x minus a to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial so this is the remainder term this is said to be remainder or of order n or the error term right so by using taylor's th theorem we can always taylor's you can say formula this is said to be taylor's formula what is the taylor's formula the taylor formula is we can express the function as polynomial of order n plus remainder of order n right so in this taylor's theorem if by taylor formula we can express a function as a polynomial of order n and plus remainder of order n and if this remainder term is going to zero as n approaching to infinity then we will say that the our taylor series it is generate converging to the same generating function right so if this remainder term is approaching to zero as n going to infinity the taylor series approaching to the same generating function so this is the requirement that remainder term is always going to zero as n goes to infinity and all these higher order derivative exist in the interval i containing the point a then your taylor series generated by fx will converge to the same generating function right however it is not always true 
in case this remainder term is not going to zero for example you can see with the help of this example uh, let's suppose this function is zero at x is equal to zero and for x not equal to zero it is minus e to the power minus one upon x square so when you find out its higher order derivatives at zero this comes out to be zero at zero this function is flattened it is flattened at zero so all the higher order derivatives they exist at zero and the value of the derivative is zero so when you put in the formula in the taylor series what will be the taylor series if all the derivatives are zero it comes out to be zero plus zero into x plus zero into x square by two factorial and so on so this is a zero series clearly this series is convergent and it converges to zero but it is not same as that fx right because fx is zero only when x is zero and for rest all the values it is e to the power minus one over x square so the series taylor series generated by this fx is not converging to the same generating function fx it is not converging to the same generating function x and this is why because here it's nth term nth term is what it is n plus 1th derivative function at c into x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial this term is basically not going to zero as n going to infinity because here these derivatives they are not bounded by some number right they comes out to be very higher pow powers in c in the denominators so that is not bounded so this term is not going to zero as n goes to infinity so therefore the series taylor series generated by fx is not converging to the same generating function so what is the requirement the requirement is you can always express by taylor's formula a function as a polynomial of order n plus remainder of order n where your polynomial of order n is what it is a polynomial of the function a taylor series till up to nth derivative so this is a terms till up to nth derivative right so this is a polynomial of order n and what is the remainder of order n this is n plus 1th derivative of the function at c into x minus a to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial where c is a number which lies between a and x right so taylor theorem says that if the limit of r and x as n going to infinity is zero then the series generated by the function fx is converging to the same generating function the sum of this series will be the same fx right so this is by the help of taylor's formula if r and x is going to zero we will say our series is converging to the same generating function fx for example uh, let's suppose we are having a function e to the power x so when we find out its maclaurin series or you can say taylor series at a is equal to 0 we get the series comes out to be so it comes out to be 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial so on x to the power n over n factorial and so on right so the term still up to nth order nth derivative that is nothing but the polynomial of order n so by taylor's formula we can express the function fx 
as a polynomial of order n plus remainder of order n where the remainder of order n is n plus 1 of derivative of the function at c into x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial where c is a number which is lying between a which is 0 in this case and x so whenever where c is lying between 0 and x this implies e to the power c is lying between 0 and e to the power x now since our x is fixed number in the interval i so this is some finite value so this is also finite so we can find out the bound of it we can replace this by some number m into x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial and the limit n going to infinity now what is the limit of this function this is 0 we know that by using the standard limits the limit of x to the power n over n factorial is 0 right so this term is going to 0 as n going to infinity right so now since the remainder term is going to 0 as n goes to infinity it means this Taylor series generated by this function is converging to the same generating function e to the power x right so now the next is the remainder estimation theorem this theorem is used to find out the error this theorem says that we can estimate the remainder term right now what is our remainder term remainder term is n plus 1 th derivative of the function at c into x minus a to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial right so if we can estimate this value if we can find out the value of the n plus 1 th derivative function at c that this is estimated by some fixed numbers right if this value is less than or equal to some fixed number then our remainder term is always going to zero as n going to infinity so basically this remainder term depends on this n plus one of derivative of the function at c if this value is some finite number it is replaced by finite number then remainder term is always going to zero this is our remainder estimation theorem which says that whenever our n plus one of the derivative of the function at any point is finite is replaced by some fixed numbers then the remainder term is always going to zero so our taylor series is converging to the same generating function so we can always replace uh, we can find out the magnitude of error this term is the error term by replacing this to be number by m and by simplifying this we will get the value of error right for example let's suppose uh, we have to find out that for what value of x can we replace sin x by the number x minus x cube by 3 factorial with an error of magnitude no greater than 3 into 10 raised to power minus 4 now just see the solution of it now what is the function over here it is sin x we have to find out first of all its Maclaurin series means find out its higher order derivatives and find the values of the derivatives at 0 so this is minus cos x and so on when you find its values at 0 you will get this is 1 this is 0 third derivative is minus 1 fourth derivative is 0 and so on the fifth derivative at 0 will be 1 and so so when 
by using the Maclaurin series formula, what we have, the sine x can be written as x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x5 by 5 factorial and so on. Now just see in the question, we have to find for what value of x can we replace sine x by the number x minus x cube by 3 factorial. So x minus x cube by 3 factorial till up to here. Now just see here your first term is 0 then then you have first order derivative term then second order de derivative is 0 then you have third order derivative then fourth derivative is 0 then you have fifth order derivative and so on right so now what is the order of this polynomial it is p3 as well as p4 both are same in this case polynomial of order 3 means the terms till up to third order that is also x minus x cube by 3 factorial and the polynomial of order 4 means the terms till up to fourth order fourth derivative since fourth derivative is 0 so again polynomial of order 4 is same as that x minus x cube by 3 factorial so in case of error we have to consider the maximum order polynomial so we will always consider p4x if the derivative is 0 you consider you include that 0 in that polynomial so we consider this as p4x so by taylor's formula we will write down the function which is sine x over here as a polynomial of order 4 plus remainder of order 4 where remainder of order 4 is the error and this remainder of order 4 is given by the fifth derivative of the function at any point c into x to the power 5 by 5 factorial. Where c is a number which is lying between a, here a is 0 because we have find out the Maclaurin series. It's a number which is lying between 0 and x. Right? Now the next is we have to find out for what value of x if we replace sine x with this number then the error of magnitude is not greater than this number right this is our error so we take the mod of it now what is the fifth derivative of the function at c the fifth derivative will be what this comes out to be cos x so at c its value will be cos c so this is cos c this is mod of x to the power 5 upon 5 factorial right but we know that the mod of cos c is always less than or equal to 1 so we can replace this with 1 so this is a maximum bound of error but in this question we have to find out the values of x such that error is not greater than this number it means this number this error should be less than 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 now you just simplify this you can find out the value of x right for these values of x if you replace sin x with this number error is not greater than 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 so once again see how to find out the error or how to find out the values of x if the function is given to you first of all find out its Maclaurin series and now in the question just see sin x ko aapko kis se replace karna hai, right you have to see that the sin x or any function is replaced by which, which number so from here you have to observe that that how many degree how many order of polynomial you have to take on. okay so now in this case the polynomial of order 3 as well as polynomial of order 4 both are same so we have to choose the maximum order polynomial so we will choose p4 so by taylor's formula sin x will be replaced by p4 so that the error is r4 and the error is not greater than 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 
we have to find out for what values of x if we replace this with this error is not greater than 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 now we just find out the value of remainder of order 4 remainder of order 4 is the fifth derivative of the function at c where c is a number which lying between 0 and x into x to the power 5 over 5 factorial the value of the fifth derivative of the function at c is cos c and we know that the mod of cos is always less than or equal to 1 so we can replace with this so we get this as right so after simplifying we will get the values of mod of x so in this way we can find out the error using remainder estimation theorem now just see one more example uh, let's suppose we have to calculate e with an error of less than 10 raised to power minus 6 right so in this case we have to calculate the value of v with an error of less than 10 raised to power minus 6 right now just see we consider the function to be e to the power x we first of all find out its maclaurin series so we know that what is the maclaurin series of e to the power x this is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on x to the power n over n factorial and so on right we have to find out the value of e so we put x to be 1 so when we put x to be 1 this is e so this comes out to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial till up to 1 over n factorial and so on right so basically in this question we have to find out that e ko kisni term se replace kare so that the error is less than 10 raised to power minus 6 so over remainder term this which is error it is less than 10 raised to power minus 6 so by taylor's formula we know that we can write out down e as a polynomial of order n plus remainder of order n where the remainder of order n is n plus one of the derivative of the function at c into x x is one here one to the power n plus one over n plus one factorial now what is n plus one of the derivative of the function at c it is e to the power c and c is a number which is lying between a and x x is 1 so from here e to the power c will be lying between 1 and e right so we have to find out that for what value of n this remainder term is less than 10 raised to power minus 6 right now since we know that e is less than 3 okay so this number is can this number can be replaced with 3 so basically from here what we have that e to the power c is less than 3 is greater than 1 right divide by n plus 1 factorial to both side okay so from here what we have that uh, we want that this number should be less than 10 raised to power minus 6 and this is possible only when only when our n is 9 Whenever our n is 9, then 1 over 9 factorial, right? 1 over 9 factorial is greater than 10 raised to power minus 6, but 3 upon 10 factorial is less than 10 raised to power minus 6. So from here, we get that n should be 
nine. So at least nine terms. If we calculate e up till up to nine terms, the error is less than ten raised to power minus six. Right. So in this way, we can calculate e that we have to go till up to nine terms. So here, this is x to the power nine upon uh, one to the power nine upon nine factorial. Right. So we have to approximate. We have to calculate e till up to one over nine factorial. Right. So that the error is less than ten raised to power minus six. So in this way, we can find out the error using remainder estimation theorem. The last article of this unit is the alternating series estimation theorem. Now, just recall what is your alternating series? Your alternating series is of the form minus one to the power n plus one into a n. Means a one minus a two. Plus a three minus a four plus a five and so on. Now, if this series satisfying the three condition that the terms a n they are positive, they are decreasing, and the third, the limit of nth term is going to zero. Now, if this series satisfying all these three conditions, then by alternating series test, the given series is convergent. now if it is convergent then clearly this is approaching to some value which is said to be the sum of this series and this value will be finite and unique say it is n so this is said to be the actual sum of the series so if we approximate the actual sum of the series with sum of first n terms what is sn sn is the sum of first n terms so here is the sum first n terms this is this so this is a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 till up to minus 1 to the power n plus 1 into n this is our sn so if we approximate the actual sum with the sum of first n terms then this alternating series estimation theorem says that this is always bounded by n plus 1th term which is the first unused term now why it is called first unused term and why it is bounded by this number now just see how what is your l it is a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 and so on and so on right the whole series sum is represented by l because this is actual sum of the series what is sn it is a sum of first n terms right so when you subtract these two what will happen all these terms till up to nth term they are cancel out so you will left with l minus sn is equal to minus 1 to the power n plus 2 into an plus 1 minus 1 to the power n plus 3 into an plus 2 minus 1 to the power n plus 4 into an plus 3 and so on. so you left with these terms now just see you can take this sign to be outside and you will get a n plus 1 then the next term will be will be having the negative sign the next having positive sign next having negative sign and so on again we can take minus to be common from here again with two terms 
and so on. Now, what is the sign of this term? Now, since this sequence is decreasing, so this term is clearly greater than this term. So, this is positive. Similarly, this is positive. Similarly, the next terms are positive, right? So, we every time we are subtracting some positive numbers from this term. And if we take more to both sides, this sign is removed and we get this term will be bounded by this number because every time we are subtracting some positive number from this term, right? So this number is bounded by the number a n plus 1 and which is the first unused term. Rest all the terms are cancelled out. If this is the first term which is left one. So this is called first unused term. So the error in case of alternating series estimation theorem that is bounded by the first unused term which is n plus one -th term. Right? And the sign of, if you remove this mod symbol, so L minus Sn, this term comes out to be positive if n plus one -th term is positive. Right? And this comes out to be negative if n plus one -th term is negative. So means whatever the sign of n plus one -th term, that will be the sign of L minus Sn. Okay. So if n plus one -th term is positive, the sign of L minus Sn is also positive. It means your actual sum is greater than approximated sum. Or your approximated sum is lesser than the actual sum. So it means it underestimates. Right? Your approximated sum, it underestimates the actual sum. Right? Because this is lesser than this. And if this value is negative, why this is negative? Because n plus 1th term, this is negative. Right? So this is negative it means this approximated sum is greater than the actual sum so this means your approximated sum over estimates the actual sum okay now just see with the help of an example let's suppose we are given a series minus 1 to the power n plus 1 upon 10 to the power n where n is varying from 1 to infinity this is a series 1 by 10 then 10 square q 4 and so on clearly this series is convergent why because this is gp series with common ratio minus 1 by 10 which is strictly less than 1 right and converges to a upon 1 minus r. So 1 upon 10 upon 1. This which comes out to be 1 upon 11. Right. So this is a GP series which is converging to 1 over 11 means L is 1 over 11. This is the actual sum. Now the question is estimate the error. Estimate the magnitude of the error. If you approximate this series with sum of first three terms. Right? Estimate the error, uh, the magnitude of error if we approximate the actual sum with the sum of first three terms. So that means L minus S3 mod. Now by using alternating series estimation theorem, clearly it should be less than equal to the fourth term, which is 1 over 10 to the power 4. So this is the bound of L. Right? And what is the sign of, this is our S3. What is the sign of 
n plus one -th term it is negative so determine whether this error is underestimate or overestimate so now in this case the approximated sum overestimates the actual sum of the series now why because l minus s3 it is negative why it is negative because the sign of n plus 1 -th, n plus 1 -th here n plus 1 -th term will be fourth term so the sign of fourth term is negative so l minus s3 this comes out to be negative negative ka baega when this value is greater than this value it means the approximated sum overestimates the actual sum of the series